There, everybody, I must apologise for our absence. Uh, Jean-Dre broke the backpack, didn't you, Jean-Dre? He's very silent. You can hear everybody. He's very contrite and sorry for himself. He broke the backpack. We don't know what he did. He says it was just some battery glitch or something. I, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He promised you he broke it. Anyway, what we're looking at here is... <laughs> he didn't really. Is a blue wax fills nest in the branches or boughs of a flaky bark acacia. And this acacia tree has provided homes for many animals, provided nutrition for many animals, and indeed it has provided a wrapping post for a number of animals. And obviously the home there. Now, if you look at it, it's got a number of fairly large thorns, and here's one of them. This one has not been occupied, but there's what, here's one that has. I'll just pull it off without impaling myself on one of these rather impressive thorns. I mean, you wouldn't want to stand on that. It's the kind of thing that Jandre would stand on, and of course it would go through his boots into his foot, and then he'd require uh, help getting to the doctor, as he did last time. It was very irritating, everyone. He couldn't drive a car. So I had to take him to the doctor while he sat there with this swollen, disgusting, pussy foot. Right. There... <laughs> <laughs> there is the spongy material that the slender ant will eat when they go in here. Now, there are no ants around. I think that's because we're in the middle of the winter. But you can see that the there is a sort of swelling. And that swelling, I, it, it's obviously a hormone that inspires the growth of some sort of uh, sort of spongy stuff inside the, the thorns. And apparently it's very good to eat for a slender ant. I'm going to eat some now. Mmm, tastes like chocolate, John, right? It doesn't really taste like chocolate. It does taste... I say there's a sort of taste of nutrition about it. Anyway, you're in for a treat, everybody. Connor Teagues is driving past us. <laughs> That's only funny because Connor, if there's one thing in the world he hates, it's to be on camera. Right, so those are the two two of the things that are in this tree. And I'm going to show you one more thorn, just to prove that something did actually live in it and eat it out. jean -Dre, I can't get it off. Do you just put the camera here? Look over here. Muntree there? Are you with me? You can see there that the that spongy stuff's been eaten out by the slender ants. I think that's wonderful. Then, if we look down here, at the base of the tree, you can see that this it's been subjected to a bit of abuse, this poor tree. It's been rubbed upon, I think, probably by buffalo initially. You can see there's mud here. The impala don't move in the mud. Um, they, they'll obviously go and drink, but they don't put mud all over their body. So I think that this was probably rubbed upon by a buffalo that came past here, decided he was probably a little bit itchy. And I don't know if you've seen what buffalo do, but it wouldn't have just walked past the thing. It probably did this. It probably pushed it over and then sort of walked over the top of it and lay on top of the tree. Um, and they scratch their undercarriages like that. And then they leave the mud everywhere. But the tree is still alive. And apparently, if you've got sore eyes, what you do is you take pieces of these bark and then you can sh soak this bark in water. So you can see it there, this flaky bark. You can soak that in water and apparently um, you can put a sort of diluted part of the decoction into your eye and that will help it. I suspect water probably works just as well. Now, Tasha Michelle, I think that was your name, was that correct? Tasha Michelle? You want to know if anybody else will use this nest over here? Tasha, I don't think so, no. And I mean, I suppose the waxbills might come back during the next, uh, so that during the next mating season, which will be very soon. But no, I don't think anything else is going to use it. The birds are very specific about their nests. Um, I'm trying to think of any that steal from others. Yeah, I mean, some of the hole nesting birds will go and steal from each other. So the um, the barbets and the woodpeckers and probably the. Um, lilac-breasted rollers, they might steal nests from each other or use nests that were previously occupied by others. Parrots, the same thing. Not these ones. They tend to be very specific 
the owners and builders of the tree nests. Right, Chandra, we can carry on.